Dun, 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 dun. Hey everyone, this is uh, Parking Lot Radio. We're sitting here with Lil Aaron. My name is Sunny Side Up, and this is my co host, Elena Flores. Hey. And uh, we're here to talk to Lil Aaron about some of the stuff he's done and the stuff he wants to do. And uh, Lil Aaron is a Grammy Grammy winner. What? Yeah, yes. He got a Grammy. Got a Grammy with Lizzo, right? Yes, sir. Written what? for The Used, written for Blink 182. Written for Louis the Child, Demi Lovato, everyone. Um, Every, I've written for everyone. You've written for everyone. <laughs> Ethel Kane, which is like, when after I saw you did a feature with her, I started checking out all her music. Love her music. Yeah, she's amazing, amazing. artist. So how did you start? Um, I, kn- I know like you've been an artist for a while, like making your own music, and we, we'll get to that. But I want to know how you started getting in the room with, uh, or even like seeing yourself as a person that can write for other people. Right. Um, well, I've been making music for a minute, you know, since I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know that the whole, like, songwriting thing was like, you know. It, you didn't know it was a thing. Yeah, I didn't know it was like a potential career path. Right. But uh, I moved out to L.A. I had, I had a couple projects that I tried really hard with when I lived in Indiana. And things just weren't working out. So I was like, I'm going to move to L.A., and just like learn about the industry. So I got an internship oh, damn. at a music management company and they managed a bunch of writers and producers. Mm-hmm. So that was when I first was like, oh, like these guys are like, they'll make like a country song one day and then like a pop song the next day and then like an R&B song. I'm like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. So that's when I first realized that it was like even an option, right? Yeah. So I was like, I want to try that out. But I stayed at that, I stayed at that company interning for, I don't know, like a year or two. And then once I felt like I kind of like picked up all the knowledge, soaked up all the knowledge I needed, I was like, yo, I'm going to try the songwriting thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, just yeah. started getting into rooms and I think it's sick. Songs. I think it's sick because like your music for yourself has so many different styles blended in, like in a way that is just like doesn't feel forced. And you can just like hear all the styles blends like so perfectly. I think that's what's that's what I like about you. That's like a big thing, but um, we were I listening, appreciate that. Yeah, we were listening to the song uh, PSA today, and uh, the subject matter on that song is just like it's so real and raw, and um, it's a one minute song, quick, like short and sweet. It has like the one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's just one minute, but like the subject matter on it, even if like you're not a songwriter or something, like you can relate to the song so much. Cause oh, like we live in a capitalist society. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. You laid out the words that are like you're saying it straight up, and like I don't feel like I've ever heard a song like where people are just like, "Yo, fuck you guys, I'm not writing songs for you no more." Yeah, it's pretty, and it's like, <laughs> I was, I was like, I mean, I wasn't nervous to put that song out. I loved that song from like the minute I wrote it, but I was, I, I didn't, I, I think in the moment I didn't realize that I thought it would be one of those songs like, "Oh, my songwriter friends will like this; they'll understand it," but seeing like a bunch of other people that you know aren't songwriters and can't necessarily specifically relate to that specific scenario but still like on a broader sense relate to it yeah was like oh okay like i feel like sometimes we like set these like rules and shit with our with you know whether it's art or whatever we're making but like as long as you just make something that you're like passionate about and like you're just like getting to the point i think people resonate with that no it's universal like and it's personal too like that's what's so crazy yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. people like when you're honest and i think a lot of like my fans even like know my journey and know like you know what i've done outside of my own artist projects funny enough a lot of them are like yo you spend too much time writing for other people like yeah finish your own album i'm like yeah you're right so i think i think a lot a lot of my fans resonated with that and were like fuck yeah yeah, but I think they're both like equally important because when you're when you're writing for someone else, you're still like you know you're still honing your own craft. Definitely of writing. For Definitely, you, I, you know? I don't I don't like regret any of my time spent working on other people's projects. I think it almost I'm just like sharpening the knife for when I dive back into my own project. Exactly, mm. and like like I said, like you can take all these artists that you've written for, like Lizzo, Louis the Child, Demi Lovato, The Used, Blink One Eighty Two, all these people, like. You have elements of all of that in your own music that like maybe the average person doesn't notice it but like they're all there like the pop like with uh that new song with um with little lotus uh go next door 
Girl Next Door. Fucking love, love that video. That. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> love the song. Yeah. That's but a like, That song is like, it's like you could have used, you could have used real drums. You could have done a lot of different things, but you kept it like, you kept it your style. You left the electronic drums mm-hmm. and it was a, it was truly like a pop punk song. Yeah, like, definitely. Like more like a pop, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, definitely. like I could feel like some cute is what we aim for vibes. That was I. <laughs> I lived in fucking. Oh man, that was my favorite band for a long time. Oh my Too god. bad that um, the singer Shant is a Meninist, but I said we wouldn't get political. So uh, okay, <laughs> I don't. I don't know much about it, but I guess <laughs> when I think, I know a lot of his lyrics, and I guess when I think about it. Yeah, no, listening back, you're like, yeah. that's fucked up, but it yeah. sounded so good at the time. Exactly. It sounded it's good. It's that sweet, sweet yes. misogyny. <laughs> it sounded good as you, like, a 13 year old. Yeah, as like, a 13 year old, you're like, yeah, like, fuck that bitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I'm I'm that bitch on the other side <laughs> being like, yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, like, the girls, liked it, the girls liked it back then, too. Yes. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think, you know, I think a, a lot of that period of music, looking back on it, is like, ooh. But it sounded good, so yeah. Hey, but you know what? Embrace there's, the cringe. Yeah, embrace always. the cringe. For there's sure. also like an equal amount of bands who were not cringy and did the right thing without even, like, without even the internet or like without even. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just knew. That. I think it's really funny though that there was this culture of like skinny twink looking dudes with like straightened <laughs> hair and like skinny jeans and V-necks being like, "That girl's a slut." It's right. like <laughs> you might be projecting a little bit, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, congrats on drugs hitting uh, sixty million. Oh hell yeah! Plays like I've known that song for that's that's the first song I ever heard of you. And the first time I heard it, I was like, "Whoa, this dude is fucking like, he just like everything in one." You know, like yeah, yeah. You got the pop punk thing, you got the pop thing, and it just like uh, it works really well for the internet. So like, you made that song in twenty sixteen, and did it start? Is like, here's when, here's what's crazy though. It dropped in twenty sixteen. I actually made that song like two years before that oh wow so i've been so sitting, sitting on, on i was sitting on it for a minute wow that's insane I, so that's like I, like, almost fig- eight years old for you now yeah before i figured out how i was gonna like it's release timeless it. yeah. yeah and then how did it um yeah. at, like at what point did it hit 60 mil is that recently or yeah it's been or it's something like something happened on thing. tiktok over the pandemic it had a little moment on tiktok and picked up it was doing like over a hundred thousand streams a day wow i have to say that's where i heard it really i was on my i was on my tiktok and was like whoa and then i remember i had heard of you prior and was like oh this it's lil yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) he's on my for you page (laughs) yeah shout out tiktok yeah (laughs) shout out china (laughs) around like how many (laughs) big shout out how many plays was it at before that whole thing happened i don't really know i don't like you don't pay attention like that yeah that's good i used to have the app there's like this spotify stats spotify artists yeah and I would fucking check it every day, but I'm just like, it's not about that shit. Yeah. No. Which, when songs do well, fuck yeah, but like, I'm not making it for the fucking stats. Yeah. And uh, quit with Travis Barker. Yep. You were the first one to, uh, I mean, I don't know if like the first one, but like one of the first guys from the SoundCloud scene. era. SoundCloud yeah. era was yeah. one of the first artists to link up with Travis. Yeah. For sure. I don't want to link you into like the SoundCloud. Like, no, I mean, I, I came from SoundCloud. In. Yeah. That's that's where I got my start. I, yeah. I have no shame in that. I and love SoundCloud. That was 2018, and you had a, a fucking uh, you had a hit with Travis Barker when no one else was even like I mean I'm sure he was doing it for other people but you're like the first guy from like the younger generation that's to, crazy to be able to yeah like, and it's crazy that he like saw that in you that was like yo this guy is dope yeah I mean and we had been working on a bunch of shit behind the scenes too like right. I, I worked on some blink music and he was producing for a bunch of artists and he would pull me into red on it so it was kind of like a it was like a hand. seamless yeah. transaction. Yeah, it wasn't even like, yo, can you do this? It was like, yo, let's do this. We were just like locked in the studio. And yeah. then we did a whole project together. We did a Christmas EP together. Oh, yeah. Was it the Blink-182? Oh. No, like I wrote their one? Christmas song, but yeah, then we did that. my EP, Worst Christmas Ever, is, oh, wow. is uh, produced by Travis. I didn't know that. Yeah. Which Christmas albums and songs are the highest grossing in sync know, and pay? I know. Mm-hmm. I know that from my it comes, but, well, it's just like It's just like, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like, even though you only get like a month or two of it, it like every year it just comes back and shit just like picks up on streams again. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. And then like you get into like the maybe like a Christmas playlist or something. Yeah, the Christmas. I mean, that's the thing is because because now we're in such a playlist generation where like people want to listen to Christmas music, but they don't want to listen to like, I mean, shout out like Nat King Cole or whoever. But they can't, they can't go <laughs> but, like, and collect all but, of like, them. Now you can like listen to your favorite yeah. artist or favorite genre Christmas song. It's like shit. Yeah. It's getting a little more niche, which is sick. Hell yeah. So sick. I, I was also really into uh, 
the song you had with Lil Lotus, uh, that one song. Oh, hell yeah. That song is, is so good. And the video is just like, when I saw it, I was like, I was like almost crying because I thought it was so fucking cool that you had your logo like on a NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> and there was like the NASCAR driver there yeah, like yeah. rocking out and like. Joe um, Graff Jr. Shout out my boy Joe Graff Jr. So, so what's the story with that? You you sponsored a NASCAR driver? Yeah. So I went to. Um, How did you w- like get an, even have that idea? I went to a NASCAR <laughs> race. Because it's so cool. My homie hit me. And he was like, I'm going to a NASCAR, ra- I'm going to Vegas to go to this NASCAR race. We're leaving in 30 minutes. Do you want to come? And I was like, fuck it, let's go. So I went to Vegas and we were hanging out in like the suite, you know, there's like, the, I don't know, in one of the suites. Mm-hmm. And so there's a couple drivers and just stuff hanging out. And uh, Joe Graf, um, the, the driver that I ended up um, sponsoring his car, he was up there and we just took a picture together. I didn't really think anything of it, but I was like, this is sick that I'm, getting a picture with a NASCAR driver. Hell yeah. And then he posted it. And then when he posted it, a bunch of people in like the, uh, in the pit, like the pit crew and just like different people working in NASCAR were just like, yo, Lil Aaron's out of race. And I was like, what the fuck? Like people at NASCAR know who I am. So then I was like, okay, this is weird. And then like the fans, the NASCAR fans started being like, yo, Lil Aaron's at a NASCAR race. And there was just like this so, moment on the internet where I was like, oh, like people in NASCAR like care. Like, they know who I am and they care. So I was like, that's interesting. So then we went to, the next day, I think, we went to uh, lunch together. And we're just chopping it up. And I was like, sick, I made a new friend in, like, a different field. You know, yeah, I love having, Something like, completely different I love music. having eclectic friends. Yeah. And then his manager was just like, yo, what if he sponsored the car? And I was like, I appreciate that you think I'm rich. <laughs> but, like, right. I can't fucking afford that. Right. Like, I'm thinking it's, like, fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know how this shit works. Right. Um, and it, it, it was a little expensive, but they, we, we figured it out. We did a race, we did one race and, um, they gave me a really good deal cause they really wanted to do it. I think they also saw like the cultural, they saw the symmetry, they saw yeah. that it would work well. Yeah. And they made over. it, they made it work for me where like, you know, I, I did a merch drop with them. We filmed the music video, oh, the music there. video. That's why I was saying the music video yeah. is so cool. So I, I like figured out a way. I remember calling my business manager and being like, yo, so I have this idea, and this is like this is like tail end of COVID. So I was like, I'm about to put this EP out. I haven't been able to be outside. I got to do something to get people's attention, and I think I found the thing, you know, like to get people talking about me again, mm-hmm. or you know, just like there's just something to post, something, something to, to post, something to spark going. the like, be like yeah. a what the fuck moment. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of my career has thrived over like little what the fuck moments. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is the perfect thing. Like nobody even has this opportunity and I don't think anyone's crazy enough to take it. No way. There's no, like you're no. definitely like, you know, soldier boy, like first artist on YouTube. You're exactly. Like, yeah. You're like first artist to fucking. Well, and I have to give props to, there's this band called avoid that oh, okay. they sponsored the car before me. Okay. They didn't do a full rap, but they sponsored the car before me or they, they, they might've done a full rap. I don't know, but they kind of, and they're, they're like my homies. So like they kind of like, I saw the vision, but I don't, but like, not that they didn't do it right. I think they did it really cool. But I saw, I was like, okay, I can rap it, do a merch drop, and shoot a music video, and, like, do all this shit at once. And, and like, sell the toy car. And sell the toy car. And, like, so I was like, I, I have this whole fucking, I was like, I think I can make this work and justify spending this much money. So I was on a call with my business manager, and I was, like, breaking it down. He's like, fuck it, bro. Like, go for it. Yeah, like. So we did it. And, we, dude, we rapped, like, from when I met him to when the race was, I think it was, like, 13 days. Whoa. So he put the whole thing together in like That's two That's insane weeks. turnarounds yeah. for merchandise. I know. <laughs> fucking trust me. I know. Yeah. it's. I think it's insane that you saw it as like an opportunity to make a music video, make merch. It's insane that you just like, you, you thought of like a, an entire universe where this fits for this video. Yeah. And not I just only think, that, you delivered on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did well. People Thank bought you. the the toy sold out, right? People yeah, I mean toy. that's a sore topic because the car has been taking like I don't think people realize that like manufacturing a diecast car is like doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. <laughs> so those are still like the production is finishing. They sent me a sample that I was that was approved. I know a lot of people are angry if you're listening. You bought a toy car. It's coming. It's coming. It's just like I'm a one man operation. I'm putting out a fucking die cast. Right. Like (laughs) this shit. Like this shit is like that. Like one person. I I can't just like call my boys. Like there's a factory that does this, and they're backed up. It's the same factory that does all the NASCAR die cast. It's like. They're, they're doing shit for Ford and shit. You know, they're right. doing shit for, like, everybody. And I'm like, hey, can I get a couple hundred cars? You know? <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're doing orders of, like, 10,000 and right. shit like that. So those are coming. Yeah. Um, I got the samples, and the samples look awesome. So I'm just waiting for the rest of them to come in. Hopefully they come in soon because I want to get those to my fans. Yeah, that, That's, like, yeah. one of the coolest collector's items that I've dropped. 
Oh, that's so cool. And along the lines of like merch and everything that you do around that is like so sick. I Hell love yeah. everything that you put out. Like, thank you. Sunny's wearing your fucking shirt Hell right yeah. now. <laughs> like, Representing. I love And that. I love yeah. your like logo and branding and everything behind thank you. you. Thank like, you. I'm really curious too about like, we haven't talked even about the music video where. Uh, yeah. Go so, for it. yeah. Um, I just remembered I hate you. First of all, like that song, also when I heard that, like I felt so like connected to it, like waking up in someone's bed that <laughs> you're just like, why did I like, yeah, why did I do that? Like yeah. you're like completely like, you know, you didn't, you know, you didn't want to do it, but you did it. And you're just like, fuck, like, why am I here? How did I get here? Uh, I'm going to die now. <laughs> that's, that's what we got from the video. But yeah, um, that's, that's basically, that's basically the story. It was cool. Like you first find kind of see like the, the green splattering all over. And then by the end you realize like the green is your blood. Yeah. 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 W were you like thinking of that when you wrote the song? Like, or was that like something that, that um, someone else, like I think I had like a loose concept and I knew I wanted to use, um, my friend Danon who directed that video. I, I knew I wanted to do something with like a monster girl. Right, because I wanted to like oh, really man, like villainize the ex. That you was know? such a well executed. Yeah, video. I mean, her yeah. and her whole crew really killed that. So shout yeah. out to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, she kind of took she took the like little idea I had and like ran with it and made it awesome. It's like and some Exorcist type shit. Yeah, <laughs> and she, and she like because like she films. She's done music videos, but she also like films like horror movies. So I was wow. like, but she does like these pastel horror movies. I was like, this is it. You yeah, can like, totally tell. Yeah, like, this is like this is the exact thing I need. It needs to be green and pink, and like there needs to be like this kind of sexy ogre girl and she's right. gotta like fucking chop my head off yeah so like she's gotta do it she's gotta do it what's your deal with the green tell yeah. us about the green like the green it's your brand it's you, you know, i'm really curious you like <laughs> yourself as anytime i see someone in green i'm like is that aaron <laughs> i'm like nah is he here nah. right now um poser <laughs> well like I, I definitely experimented with hair color you know, I, I was dyeing my hair every color, you know, mm. and I think I, when I landed on green initially, I was like, okay, I feel like this is kind of like, I don't know. I just like stuck with like, w I don't think it was too thought out at the beginning. Like I was dyeing my hair every color. I did like pink, purple, all this, you know, blonde, everything. And, uh, when I got to green, I was like, oh, I kind of like this. So I like stayed, my hair was green for like a year. And then when I, it was like the same period where I, where I, um, officially made like the Hazhart logo. Oh yeah. I love the logo. And so I had love me and logo. me and two of my, uh, friends were Sean and Mikey. Um, I brought them out to LA. Well, I brought Mikey out to LA. Rashawn is already in LA, but we, I was like, we were like putting our heads together. They were like, kind of like the creative directors behind it. And I was like, I have this vision. I need help putting it on paper and like making it real. So we we went through a bunch of different versions of what the Hazheart would be. We went through a bunch of different shades of green. Like we literally settled on a hex code, 5EDB41. Oh, that's, love that. As a line. creative director, I'm like, oh, yeah, we your literally got guidelines. and if you Google, if you Google 5EDB41, I come up. So oh, I that's that wow. You've that made shit. it like in shit. a visual sense of yeah. career. And uh yeah, I just wanted everything to be really concise and packaged and and like like this was this was right when when I was putting together glowing pains, mm -hmm. so I was like, this is my chance to like if I'm gonna roll this out and I'm gonna like make my that like step. glowing pains has drugs on it, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I'm gonna make like my step into the industry and like make my fucking impact, like I want to do this right and visually have everything like everything, tied up with a bow, right? You know? Everything everything settled. Because I I mean, it makes sense and it, like visually where I come from. I, I'm a like I'm a visual artist and this is what I do is help artists right. that like when I look at you and your brand it seems so considered it is so well packaged well and it's gotten to the point now where my life is so like I've been doing this the green thing for like fucking seven years now like my life is so cohesive that like I just wake up and put clothes on and I like you know, it's like it's not like I'm like styling myself my closet's just like right. fucking fits the right. brand like I don't have to like think about it anymore no but that's so nice too like yeah, for efficiency it's, it's just like <laughs> it's just like on autopilot now oh yeah my whole I mean and I, that was another thing I always wanted to do with my brand is that I didn't want it to be forced I didn't you know I didn't want to have to like I made my like for the longest time 
my hair was like with the ombre because mm -hmm. I just didn't want to fucking bleach it again. It was like right. it was like everything in my branding was like I had the big ass beard for a minute just because I was like I, it was out of like just like fucking what's the easiest thing to do when I wake up? How do right. I make that? Because then because that's the only way I knew that I was going to be able to do it every single day. Yeah, and also like you don't want to think about like for as long as you've known me, like I've always been more all black. Yeah, like you don't want to think about like you don't want to get your head caught up in decisions that aren't that important because like, you need to save your decision making for the things that yeah, are important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I but I still think that like visually Oh, no, of course. I think that's like a big a big piece of just like m making sure people remember you. Right. You know? Right. It's staple like that's staying in people's like, mind and, and like, that's what that hex code does. Yeah. Hell yeah. The way I see it like if if someone can draw a cartoon of you and everyone knows that it's you then you've like set yourself apart i think i i'm trying to remember who, who told me this i think it might have been drama from young and reckless I, he was like if you can if people can go out and make a costume of you exactly on halloween for 20 bucks so they can go out and just like pick up a couple things and make a costume of you then you're fucking winning exactly i love that yeah, yeah like, like someone so like someone just goes out and gets a green wig and like some Done. fucking you know like like paints their nails black or some shit. you know what i'm saying like where's a fucking gaudy ass belt whatever the fuck you know like yeah they so can just really, like put together a costume it came bit. down to it like i just vibed with this green yeah and it, I, I love mean, that i think I love that. at the end of the day like green especially the like neon toxic green is the most to me to my eyes it's like the most like jarring like you know it's like toxic waste like stay away from right this. yeah and that fit a lot that fit with the hazard because it's like the hazard yeah, yeah. it's like i wanted Bio this like hazard. toxic yeah i wanted this yeah. like toxic stay away from me this like you know this like very like yeah but it's still a heart yeah and, it's still, and like, like just like the green so, goo yeah. like from the yeah. video like i love all that like that imagery of like this i don't know like i didn't it's even like energy and toxic and all this right. good I, shit i like didn't even realize that has heart is it's short for it's like hazard and heart put together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I thought it was like hazel and heart. Put together. <laughs> that's like, funny. Like green heart. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, fuck it. Now it works for that. Yeah. There yeah, you it's go. another layer. It's yeah. another layer. And, and what do you call your logo? What's it called? The hazard. Yeah. It's just called the hazard. That is the hazard. Yeah. That's the heart with the hazard. It's yeah, like a hazard. hazard heart. Fuck man, it's genius. That's the it symbol. Is that's the hazard symbol. <laughs> that's so sick. Like I want that on an energy drink. I'm I want working that. on it. Trust me. See? Yeah. There we go. I'm trying to do everything. Like yeah. I want the brand, like the Hazard brand. I also like wanted a way to be able to make merch, but like not put my fucking face yeah, in. Yeah, not make it about you. Just yeah. make something cool that you would wear. Exactly. Cause I know that like, you know, I, I cause like I, f I feel like you probably wear this more than like a shirt with my face on it. Of course. Like who wants to wear a shirt with someone's face on it? Especially if like, they're like still alive. Yeah, like, like, you know like what I'm saying, yeah, like, like Paul I, I, McCartney or like John Lennon. Yeah, exactly. That's like, fine. like someone, like if it's a throwback, cool. But like, I don't know. Like if I, I, I love my friends, but I'm not gonna wear a shirt with their face on it. Mm. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I remember one of my friends did that. He made like a he made a T-shirt with like a picture of him on it. I was just like, are, like, do you, like maybe like you think this is cool, but like, are people gonna want to wear this? I think that it's funny because I think there are certain types of fans. If if you're like far enough removed from the person, I can see it. But I just wanted something that because I was I was just trying to make clothes that I would want to wear. Exactly. Yeah. Because the main way that I'm selling most of these clothes is that I'll make a you're gonna shirt have to wear them and I wear it yeah. in my in like all my posts for like a week and I'm like, hey, this shit's dropping, you know? Like I hype it up and then I give it to my friends and I want to give my friends shit that they're actually gonna wear. Yeah. And I don't want to have to be like, hey, can you wear that and send me a picture? Like, cause oh, I, yeah. I send somebody a hat or I send somebody a fucking yeah. hoodie. You didn't even send me this. I just went to the website and bought it. Cause I just fucking you're a real one. No, I, I, I just thought it was dope. The <laughs> back is amazing. Like I love what it says. Oh yeah, it's so good. It says, but, uh, what, yeah, what, does no. it, what does it say? Cause I can't turn around. <laughs> what are you scared of? Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember me and Skylar. Uh, we saw you wearing it. Were you wearing it at the emo night festival in uh, when we went to Vegas? I was wearing the full the full jumpsuit. Oh, I right. might have wore that one day. Yeah, but the day I was DJing, I was wearing the full jumpsuit with the like the Pat Oliver pattern. Hell yeah! But uh, but yeah. yeah, we both saw like we both like read the back of your shirt. It said not a damn thing, and we looked at each other like, oh, it's so fucking dope. Hell yeah! <laughs> hey, I have to shout out my boy Carlos who um does a bunch of the designs for Has Heart. He oh came, hell yeah! He came up with that. He was like, we got. He there's this like news clip of some old lady that 
I don't know exactly what happened. I think she got robbed or something, and she like held the robber at gunpoint. And then at the interview, I, f- I might be fucking this. No story way. Up. I'm, I'm probably <laughs> fucking this story up. And this, but essentially, she was at interviewed, and she was at she was at there. She let her like, so what are you afraid of? And she's like, not a goddamn thing. Wow. And we're wow. like, all right, that's going on the back of a shirt. It, it feels like it feels like a, something like a cowboy would say. Like when after he's like drawing out his gun. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it just also like it applies to a lot of things. Like, you know, it's like you can apply that to life, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not to get all deep. No, I oh, definitely let's get deep. I think after seeing you wear it, I definitely like I definitely felt the vibe. I was like, fuck that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm not scared of shit now. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I think I mean for me, you know, I'm like a huge blink fan. I think it's so cool that you wrote uh songs of Blink one eighty two. Uh, you wrote the Christmas song, right? Yeah. Is is that the only song you wrote with them? That's the only song that's out, but yeah. Oh, uh, word. So you've written others that might come out, might not come out. I mean, we'll see what happens. I I, I think they're they got some stuff to figure out as a band before yeah. they release music. So. Yeah, definitely. They have uh, some stuffs in the air right now with them, but. Um, I mean, fucking, I would be ecstatic. Yeah. What what was what was the process like? Did you work with um, did you work with their producer or what, were you like with them all together? For that song? Um, no, so they Travis Travis sent me that beat and was like, Hey, we're working on we we, we want to put our Christmas song and this is after me and him did the Christmas EP. Oh, so you already had the Christmas vibe. Yeah, so he was like <laughs> he was like, I think you're the guy to do this. Yeah, so you're the guy. So I pulled in a couple of my homies one night and I think we were just drunk and we were like, Fuck it, let's make a blink song. Hell yeah. That's so sick. And it was it came together pretty awesome. Yeah. I also really like the song you did with the used that was with, uh, like, working with uh, Feldman? Yeah, bro, yeah. Feldman is... You've worked with him a lot? Oh, yeah. He's, like, one of my good friends. He's he's the man. He's such a legend. Dude, the he's been in legend. this. He's been in this game for so fucking long. Yeah. And he's still grinding every day. I love that. He's, I'm, I'm about to... Fuck it. I don't care if I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm about to work with him in a Treyu. I'm oh, really wow. excited. Whoa. Damn. Yeah. He's working with a Treyu? I, I think don't know if that's public knowledge. I think not, he's worked man. with them before, right? Probably. I mean, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really dope. I completely lost what I was gonna say after that. You were just telling me I'm badass, yeah, uh, yeah, basically, pretty fucking badass. <laughs> Work with Feldmo, you've worked with everyone, it's pretty crazy. I've worked yeah. with a lot of people, mm-hmm. yeah. And do you think are, are most of these times like in the studio with them, or most of the time you're by yourself, just like? Uh, writing, writing I would it? say a lot of the times I'm in the studio with them, yeah. you know, every once in a while I'll do a song with my friends and we'll send it to someone and then they'll you know like, like that kind of yeah that that happens too but i think my my strike rate seems to be a little bit higher when i'm in the room with the artist yeah i'm pretty good at like figuring out what an artist wants to do right you know because yeah. i'm a, I, I, and i feel like i'm like easy to work with because i'm an artist myself mm-hmm. there's a lot of like not to shade anyone else but i think there's a lot of songwriters out here that like don't necessarily understand what it is to be an artist mm-hmm you know, and it's like you got to say something you stand behind and right. like you got to sing it on stage every night and, you know, say like it's not just about like putting together a song one day, you know. Right. It's yeah. about like how long can you take this song? Are you going to want to play it every night? Yeah, because a lot of these bands, especially mm-hmm. like when you speak of these like legacy bands, like I don't think they necessarily knew what they were doing when they wrote the one song that they've had to close their set with every night for right. 20 years. <laughs> right. So there's like a little bit more of a like, OK. If this if this is gonna have a chance of being like the song, like I want to make sure I fuck with this shit. You yeah, know? yeah, and it's even crazier like that. The, the only song like I heard all like the songs, not all of them, but I heard a lot of the songs that you wrote on, and I find a lot of your personality in them. I definitely did. I was surprised that I found a lot of your personality in the Selena Gomez song. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, don't I love know. that. It was something about the beat that felt like a like a, a type of song that Lil Aaron would like. Oh, hell or yeah. Something. Yeah, I thought it was really dope. That was and, a fun uh, one. Yeah, I watch uh, I watch this guy Finn McKinty a lot on uh, I love Finn. on YouTube. Like he's seriously like my favorite YouTuber. I think he's kind of like the uh, like like the dad of like all this stuff. And, yeah, like, definitely. And he's kind of like he'll, he always like gives you props. Like whenever he's talking about like the new generation of like SoundCloud rappers, he's like, you know, this guy is a little whack and this guy's a little whack. But he's like little Aaron and little Lotus. I love what they're doing. He gave like an in depth. Uh, an in-depth like uh, review of your video together. Uh, oh, sick! Girl yeah. next door. Yeah, I remember that. Shit, that video too. I think all your videos they're so like, I mean, they're so like on point. It's not just like visuals; they're all like work so well with the song. Yeah, like Thank especially you. that song is like so like the video is so fucking funny, and it's like I don't think there's any other people that are like comfortable enough <laughs> <laughs> with themselves. Well, we're also in a group together called Boyfriends. Right, so it works out. <laughs> right, yeah. 
Tell me about boyfriends. Yeah. It's with uh, Smart Death and Lil Lotus yep, and yep. anyone else. I mean, Jackie Boy is like the like ghost member, the silent partner, I cool. guess. Cause he he's like, we, so we have an album almost done. Um, Jackie produced most of it, and then also it was me, Jackie, and then Lotus's brother. Um, what is what does his brother do? Lotus producer. Oh really? Oh, he's an artist and a producer. Yeah. What's his name? I didn't know that. Um, fuck, you're putting me on the spot right now. Sorry. I feel so bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. We could just keep going. But does he make beats for Lotus too? I, he, he makes music in the in the same world. Yeah, Word. yeah. Joel is his name. Thank Joel. God I remember that. Yeah. Um. But uh, shout out Joel. But uh, so we actually made that record like probably two years ago, and we're just finishing it. It's just because we're all so fucking busy. We have our own separate. Yeah, especially Lotus. He's got the band. He's got the Lotus, and then he's got some back issues. I mean, yeah. I mean, minus his back issues, that man's not busier than I am, bro. Right. Yeah, definitely. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, nah, I'm fucking with you. Yeah. I mean, we all got our own shit. It's it's hard to like focus on, you know, we all working on our own albums. We're all working on touring on our own our own projects and stuff. So it takes time. Um, but yeah, we're pushing it across the finish line. Hell it's yeah. getting mixed right now. So hell yeah. Uh, the, the new BF's album. That's yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think all the music you've made with Lotus, like even all the features and everything, they're all like really dope. How'd yeah, you, me and him got a good thing going. How'd you guys meet? Yeah, we met through Smart Death actually. Okay. Actually, no, 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 no. Let me remember this correctly. So um, there was a drummer of one of my old bands when I lived in Indiana named Miguel, and he moved to Texas, and then we kind of kept in touch. And then when I was going down to play So What Fest in like maybe twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. He was like, yo, um, you have to meet Lil Lotus. I think you guys would get along. And I was like, cool. I looked this shit up on SoundCloud. I was like, yeah, this shit's dope. So I went to uh, one of his performances, and it was him and a couple other guys. Um, and I went with my manager, Nick. And I remember we didn't know, I didn't know what he looked like. And right. there's three dudes up on stage, and I was like, I really hope it's that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they finished, and they're like, what's up, my name is? And I was like, oh, thank God that was Lotus. Yeah. So then we kicked it that night, and we, like, briefly, you know, we just, like, had a little brief interaction. And then um, when Smart Death was out at my house, um, back when I lived in the mini mansion, he, Lotus, all, he, was, he was already, he was, like, a little bit closer to Lotus at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, Lotus is going to come out. I was like, yeah, we should all stay together. Mm -hmm. And then they were actually going to make a mixtape together. And then I was like, yo, what if we just did it three way? Right. And then we make, and then we made it. And like, I was like, this is way too dope for just a mixtape. What if we made this like a side project? Right. Okay. So then it kind of all came. I mean, it was like very, yeah, it was emo boy band. That's what we call it. It was all very (laughs) organic and like, not, I'm not trying to take all the credit for it. It was definitely all of us being like, and it was just like the, in the moment, I don't think as much of it was planned as much as it just like happened. Right. And we were all Um, staying together, having fun, partying every night. And we, we went to this, I think we were like in the studio for two days and we made that whole first mixtape. In we're just two like, days. Yeah. Well, because it's so By easy me. when there, it's so easy when there's three of us because one person sings the hook and then the other two do a verse and the song's done. Right. So there's like so little pressure right. and we can just knock songs out. That's yeah. amazing. And I think we were like, "Yo, send beats to this email." And we would just go and like listen to beats and be like, "All right, I got a hook on this one." Boom, go and do a hook, and then the other two dudes write a verse, and it's like, "Song's done." Like we can finish a song together in like an hour. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I was I was talking to my friend the other day about like just music in general. It's so much better when you have like everyone together working on it as opposed to like in different rooms. Definitely. Like when you're in the room, like you hear someone do that, then you're like, oh shit, we could do that too. And then everything. Yeah. And if you can bounce ideas off people, that exactly. human, that human validation exactly. and being able to be like, hey, is this cool? And then someone being like, yo, what if you said this? And I think there's so much mutual respect between the three of us that it's just like, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of like, even like when you break it down to like vocally, like Mike sings lower, I sing in the middle, and Lotus sings high. So like automatically there's space for all of our vocals. And then our writing styles are a little different. And then just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it it just, it it always like, it comes together. It comes together. You can tell who's who when you're listening to it. You don't have to be like, oh, is this Aaron or is this Lotus? Yeah, 100%. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. You can tell. Uh, I think uh, my favorite song from you is uh, Dark Matter. That I think that's that kind of stands out from your catalog, right? As opposed to most of your other songs. Definitely, that's definitely like <sighs> the slowest. Yeah, emo is. That's my shit. That's like <laughs> I love how there's like z- almost zero drums in it. Yeah, yeah. Like there's little, a little, there's a heartbeat. A li- exactly, mm. a little bit. I actually played it, and when I when I did like a sway in the morning set, 
I played that song in it. Oh, sick. Yeah, because, like, I f when I did Sway in the Morning, I didn't want to just go there and, like, play, like, Migos and, like, stuff that, like, other any other DJ would play. Right. So I went in there and I, I played, like, Peep. I played Your Stuff. I played, like, Young Skirt. I just played, like... Oh, no. I, I kind of... Yeah, that's <laughs> popping off right now. It's going crazy. You saw that? <laughs> Shout yeah. out Young Skirt. Yeah, so I just kind of played, like, uh, kind of like the SoundCloud rappers more because I feel like no one else would play little Aaron on Sway in the Morning. I love that. But, Shout out to you. Yeah, but it, it fit well in the set. I don't know. Yeah, that song's funny. I actually wrote that song. I made that whole song, like, immediately after my one of my exes broke up with me. Mm -hmm. And, I, like, literally, like, she left. I didn't even get out of bed. I grabbed my laptop and made that song. <laughs> it's, like, the most emo, depressing, yeah. like... Well, that's my shit. That's the shit. Yeah, I was just, like... Is that I was where just, you like, get, like, your material from? Like, come I mean, on. We haven't talked about, like, the scope the, of your that's writing. That's the biggest, like... That's the most, like, heart-wrenching, like, breakup song that I have. Oh. And I, th I just remember in the moment being, like, feeling so many emotions and, like, being very, like... Eh. I, like I was like, I might as well fucking make a song no, about like this. No, like, most people wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing. I also like that it's not, like, bitter. It's like, no. I, I hope we can be friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fuck it, yeah. yeah. It's like, this all sucks, but whatever, one day we could be friends. And hey, she followed me back, so oh, I guess sure. we're cool. I guess we're yeah. cool. Shouts out. Do you think she knows the song? Was about I think her. she definitely does. It yeah. was the it timing was, of it was actually, dude. There was a fucking <laughs> shot that we edited out of the music video. It was so corny. Right. At the at the last minute, I was like, take that out of the music video. What but it was, was like it? a picture of us, but like the side that's on her was like on fire. Oh my like, god! So I like, wish real, you kept uh, it. No, it was too much. Too real. <laughs> it was too much. Too I was real. like, bro, I'm not trying to put her on blast. Right. Right. I mean, it would have been cool if you took like a new picture with someone else and then did it. Yeah, yeah but it, you know, I, I, it didn't need it. It didn't yeah. need it at the end of the day. I really like. I think that with that video like with you shaving your head and everything i think it really got like the i don't know it, it hit it on the mark yeah i feel like i was fucking depressed for yeah. sure you looked well it. the <laughs> fact that <laughs> thank you you thank played you. the part <laughs> the fact though that you were and you just pulled out your laptop and and like wrote this down like that takes discipline i didn't write it down i recorded it like you recorded the it. vocals <laughs> those vocals are like recorded like First within day. an hour That's of me so getting broken up raw. with wow. But how did you, you already had the instrumental down? No, I made the whole thing. That, oh, really? Crazy. You played the guitar and shit? No, it's a splice loop, bro. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, my God. Mind blown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shout out fucking Splice. I'm it's funny though because that. that was the first song to blow up without Splice Loop, and a bunch of other people used it. And all the comments on there is like, "You ripped off Lil Aaron." I'm like, I don't think I've ever publicly acknowledged it. it's a Splice Loop, right? <laughs> I Let's mean, acknowledge it. It's acknowledged. <laughs> I'm surprised that they were able to. I mean, I guess they they didn't know that you used it first, but whatever. I mean, it don't fucking matter. Anybody can use it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Go, I'll I'll go I'll go find the link and I'll post it. Everybody make a song to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. They're not gonna write one like I'm not Aaron fucking did. picky, bro. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Everybody eats. Yeah. Yeah. If you can write a better song than me, you do it. Yeah. I think um it's weird. Like we've known we've kind of like known each other online for a long time, but I think we only became like kind of like friends, friends like a year ago, maybe. Oh, you consider us friends? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or I guess we got tighter at like the emo night LA uh, no. Well we kicked it. Vegas. We kicked it. Like Remember that year. one time we got fucking we went to that coffee shop when I lived at Mini Mansion. Right. With uh, Clyde? Yeah, that was that was probably the first time we really like broke yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But yeah, in the last in the last year or so we've been like buddies. Yeah, we've been I mean, we always end up in the same place at the same time. We With like a bunch of, of other people that yeah. we don't know. So we're just like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was it was definitely a joke. And then yeah. we had a we had a nice weekend in Vegas. Oh my god. That was a nice like, little romantic getaway. Oh my god. That was I mean um, that what was happened also, in Vegas? That was also <laughs> the first time I met Skylar. So Oh shout out we gotta shout out Skylar shout one out time. Skylar, yeah. I was trying to get Skylar to come to this. I dude. <laughs> I tried to get Skylar to do a podcast with me, and he was like, I don't know. Oh, I'm going to make him do it. Skylar. He's scared. You're next. Skylar, he's, he's watch scared. out. He's scared to get on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've done enough of these, but it is, I mean, the first couple times when you're like, fuck, this is recorded, and whatever I say is like, it does, it, I can see people getting nervous for it. Yeah, but I'm also like, But you also, know nothing matters. So. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to. Put me on the spot. You're like, no, so uh, this no, tweet you say. posted in 2013. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know I'm not going to say all the bad things you've done. <laughs> I'm joking. Long list of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. But so what did happen in Vegas, though? Yeah, was, what did happen? <laughs> it was Emo Night, emo night Vegas. And we were, I think we were all just on a bender. And... 
As you do in Vegas. As you do in Vegas. Mm-hmm. But specifically Emo Night Vegas, it was like, because oh, Emo I Night, I was there. Emo Night in its own is like, a, it's very fun, but it's like a fucking, you know, four or five hours of like getting fucked up and listening to Emo songs and then you go home. Maybe yep. you go to an after party. But three days in a row of that shit, whoo, I was dead at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, because it was a day party and then the night party, and then it would be like fucking Sleeping with Sirens would perform, and then fucking, it was just like, it was all so many things that I couldn't miss out on, and I don't go to bed at 2 a.m. when I'm in fucking Vegas, so yeah. it was, Jesus Christ, it was a, a mess, but it was a lot of fun. It was also, Shout out TJ and Morgan. Oh my God, shout out, yeah, shout out Emo Night LA, they're like, I, I guess if it, was, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be as close as we are now. Wow, bringing people together. Yeah, I'm like, also you played that Irving Plaza. Yep. With uh, like three oh three and like yep. the emo night tour. That was the emo t- emo night tour. Yep. Yeah, and then we kind of hung. They've out done there. so much for me. Like those those guys are me too. Very man. very near and dear to my heart. They've done like anytime I ever ask them for anything, they're just like, yeah, here whatever you want. A blowjob. Oh. Um, I had to I had to pay a little I had to a pay, little extra. I had to pay Morgan a little bit for that one. Yeah, but uh, really? yeah, one, one sponsored to. post. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was that was really fun. How did you? One, the one artist that I'm curious is like how you fit in with was Big Boy. How did, how did you start working with Big Boy, or how did you get a song? Um, with him? that was just a record I made with a couple homies that, and then it just like and it was like a pitch. It got, yeah, it was a pitch record, mm. right. and it was sitting around for a minute. I think it was like I don't remember how long, but that record was sitting around for a minute. It, but it had that feel that right. like. Are, are you a fan of like Outkast and oh, stuff like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. fuck yeah! Oh fuck yeah! Yeah. <laughs> so that must have been really dope to get a fucking song with Big Dude. Boy, dude. Fuck yeah, what are you talking about? It's yeah. like legendary. <laughs> yeah. Legendary. I mean, I think all these people, like, I think Lizzo is legendary. Yep. Kim Petras, the yep. used. Yes. Fucking the used. I like, feel like you have such a wide variety of yeah. who you've produced with. It's amazing. Yeah. And that's the goal. Like, I want at the end of the day, like, I want my Wikipedia page to be like, what the fuck? Like, uh, I want to, like, there. work yeah, with, like, it's already there. there right <laughs> now. I want to be, like, working with new metal bands and rappers yeah. and pop stars and just, like, yeah. just all the shit that I like. Because I don't want to have to pick one thing. You know, I'm so, like, ADD and I, and I grew up in this culture of, like, you were allowed to like everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just, like, don't want to pick one thing. Because one day I wake up and I want to make a fucking rock song. And the next day I want to make a fucking bad bitch anthem yeah you know? yeah it's yeah. like what who's gonna fucking stop me yeah also you, you introduced me to a uh, black bear oh hell yeah which i think was so dope like i was so like i wasn't starstruck when i met him but i was very like surprised that he was just like there and like oh yeah i was like what the fuck how That's did you I'm guys like, meet and how did that happen how did i introduce him well both how did he meet you know bear? yeah you I would, I would and then, hanging out yeah. with him or whatever it was. Yeah. um so when i was i knew black bear from like the party scene in la we had mutual friends and i think there was probably what especially like super early on i think i probably like punished him at some parties being like we need to write because i was such a big fan <laughs> right. like yo what if we got in the studio <laughs> right. you know like yeah. it's like 3 a.m and we're like fucking partying and i'm like yo that's crazy yo what if we worked together and he's <laughs> what like, if we kissed and he's like yeah sure you know he right. definitely could give it like yeah. rightfully so probably the same thing i would do to some kid that came to me at a party exactly. like, yeah we should work i'm like yeah of course cool um but when i had put together glowing pains there was like kind of a little bit of like industry buzz going around a couple people had heard it i played it for like zane low and i played it for like some people and and people were talking about it and i think he caught wind i don't know exactly who from but i think he caught wind that i had this project that people were saying is like about to fuck shit up so he hit me one day and he was like yo come through and play me that project so i came through and he was like yo i'm gonna do whatever i can to help you blow this shit up like this shit's like that's so awesome this shit's next level and so then we just started kicking it all the time and we were writing together and then he was like yo i'm going on tour in like two weeks oh shit like do you want to come out with me and i was like fuck yeah so So i went on that tour with him literally just like rode on the bus with him and his crew like it was such a blast that was the first like full u.s tour he introduced me to all his fans um, and that really, that was really, that coupled with the project was like really like when things went from like zero to like, oh fuck, Something. like people are listening yeah. and people are talking and people are paying attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and we dropped a record together called Escalade. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he, he put out Playboy shit featuring me. So like we had like these records together. So it just kind of like made sense. Mm-hmm. And like, um, I think s- still to this day, that's probably the most crossover fan base I have is like 
his right. fan base and my fan base. Right. I, got, I got a lot of my core early fans from Black Bear. So and I'm I think like, you guys are different enough, like, in sound yeah, yeah. that, it, like, you're not But we're influenced by the same shit. We, like, exactly. when we're in the studio together, like, we, like, have the same vision. Yeah. And that's, I think that's why we locked in so hard is because, like, in the studio, we were, we were writing songs every day on tour. And, like, I knew how to just, like, sit back because he's such a good songwriter. He doesn't, like, necessarily need anybody. Right. But, like, I was able to sit back and, like, I could tell when he was, like, then I'd be like throwing him ideas and shit. Right. And, then, like, mm-hmm. and I would be like, oh, yo, what if we made a song about this? And he'd be like, hell yeah. Or, like, what if we started with this line? So, yeah. He said we just became really good friends. And he's yeah. like, I'm, I'm forever indebted to him for like what he's done for my career. You know, he's, yeah. he's the big homie for real. When I, when I met him that night, he like gave me his number. And then like a few days later, he was like texting me and like, he's like, yo, can you help me with this Instagram caption? And he was like, so I was like, how is this guy texting? Like, he's like the biggest fucking like, the biggest artist. <laughs> I, he's, he's, he's asking me for help. Yeah. I thought it was so like sweet of like nice of him. to. Yeah, just he's, even, he's just a little teddy bear. Yeah. He's a black bear teddy black, bear. Yeah. Really <laughs> nice guy, yeah. Yeah. Tour though. Like, how was touring? Like, that's a big tour. Yeah, it was sold out every night, like four or five thousand cap rooms. It was fucking insane. I just got like thrown into it. I don't know. Like, I'm one. Ugh, I'm a homebody. Like, touring seems. Me too. To- okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me fucking. Like when I too. hear tour, I'm just like, okay, have fun. Like. <laughs> yeah, literally. I, I mean, touring's fun. I like seeing the fans in real life. You know, mm-hmm. that's like the that's the main reason, right? Cause right. Like, that's how you see. connect and have organic exactly. fans and like. True well, and just fans. like there's all this work you do in the studio alone in LA or wherever the fuck you are, and like there's all these fans that are like people on a screen or like followers or whatever you know and it's like easy to get lost in that but like when you play a show and you see like real people wearing your merch and singing your songs back to you you're like oh right so there's rewarding like, there's just like real people like right. this isn't just like some fucking internet microcosm this is like a real thing and pe- real people actually care about this and that i definitely i mean that's the biggest payoff of playing shows yeah, yeah. And as that at that time, was he touring with a full band or was he? Yeah, dude, his live show has been insane. Yeah, he's got one of the best. Li- dude, I saw him when I saw him at So What, what was it, like a month or two ago. Fuck, he like he just keeps getting better too. He's he's like an insane vocalist and he can Play fucking bass. shred all the instruments and yeah. shit. Like he's crazy. Yeah, but his band is insane too. So yeah, he yes. knows what he's doing. He's really fucking good. I also got to compliment you on your um, like your sneaker. You wear like some like old school like early 2000s skate shoes oh yeah it's i got like, some good ones it's you're like a skate shoe connoisseur i'm i'm, I'm just like i was raised on ccs magazine me too, bro. man me too and like sometimes i wish i can get like sneakers that they don't make anymore oh 100 percent. so hard but you got some of them i do got, got some, some rare, rare ones, ones. Pe- like if you <laughs> it, yeah people are always surprised when they see my closet because i kind of wear the same shit every day i just kind of like grab whatever but i have grails i have mm. grails in yeah. my fucking closet bro it's also like those sneakers, they, they wouldn't, like, sell to, like, a sneakerhead type of guy. Right. But, like, for me and you, like, if we see him, we're like, oh, oh yeah, shit, I mean, fucking, uh, did, I, did I put you onto the yeah. Garage Days collection? Yeah. Yep, I knew, I yeah. knew I did. Yeah. And you bought a bunch of that shit, I right? Every- <laughs> <laughs> I bought a couple, I bought a couple I fallen bought, shoes that yeah. Jamie Thomas owned, and I bought, like, I bought just a couple things off the store, but there's so many things on, on, that, on that website that I was just like, I wish this fucking fit me. Yeah. But I feel like you I, scooped it all up. I still bought stuff even if they weren't my size. Yeah, just I to just have it. Them. Yeah, I'm a real like collector of like, no, like it's never gonna be worth anything on eBay, but it's just like worth so much I to want, me. It, yeah, exactly. I want to walk into my closet and see it there. Exactly. I'm probably never gonna wear them. You know? Yeah. But uh, I think they're just cool to have. I don't know. It's like a piece of history. It is a piece of history, and it's like it's like there's something. I mean, I guess that is in its own right is like collecting, right? Mm-hmm. Which I think is important right to just like have a time capsule of history and culture but there's something to being able to like walk into your house or walk into your fucking you know having like cool weird shit in my living room and in my studio and in my closet where i'm like it feels like a little mini museum you Mm -hmm. know the museum of like things that i like that like now that i'm like at a point where i can afford to just like buy because you know how many times i would get those magazines and i would circle shit that i knew i was never getting yeah 100%. 100%. But, like, now I can go back and fucking fulfill yeah. that little fantasy of, like, 14-year-old me being like, I want those so bad. I'm like, fucking, now That's I can crazy. do it. That's da- like, I can just dap up young me and be like, we did it, bro. Exactly. Just That's fucking, like, why not? Whenever people come into my bedroom, like, my, I literally just, like, set up my... How often does that happen? <laughs> it's, it's, like, maybe, like, once a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whenever someone comes in. No, my bedroom is also, like, a music studio. Oh, nice, But nice. there's, like, a nice separation. Hmm. There's, like, a Can I get couch. another one of these? 
there's there's, yeah, a, let's there's a couch do one for each it's not just like a bed and then and then the studio situation you know so i can actually no. like he separates church from people state. there i want to yeah. see you yeah. toss this one I'm, but, I, I can catch it <gasps> what? Oh, can when, you just set mine down <laughs> <laughs> Whenever people like come to my room Thank and they you. see all the stuff around, they're like, I feel like this is what this is like what a 14 year old dreams. Dude, I have a troll collection. Like, you know? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like inherently what nostalgia is, right? Exactly. It's like things that you thought were cool when you were in like middle school and well, high school. And nostalgia right. is like the biggest, like, you can make a lot of money off of oh, nostalgia. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as, what happened with me? What are you like, talking about? That's my whole fucking career. Yeah. When, when I first started, like when I got to that Same. point where I was like making money, where I can buy like dumb shit, I bought like the Tom DeLonge guitar. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, I always wanted Dude, it. I got it yeah. in yellow. Yeah. It's like I think yellow is like the rarest color. Yeah. And I bought it at like seven hundred dollars, and then um, literally like a year later is when like Blink came back and like Blink was starting to pop off again. And then the guitar went up to like two thousand dollars, dude. Do you know what's crazy with my? I have a cr pretty extensive hookups collection. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, I love hookups. And I started it before the pandemic, but I think the pandemic made like any like niche hobby that someone had that it just like oh yeah blew it up right because everyone's like bored at home like fuck it I'm gonna get into my no one hundred percent and then everyone so was these talking to everyone all these like rare vintage shits like went like bonkers mode. So I have some I have some T-shirts that I got for like. A hundred dollars or sub a hundred dollars that like fucking are now worth like four or five hundred. The hookup stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, Jeremy Klein, legend. Fucking I, legend. You're into Shouts. skateboarding too. What's up? Yeah, you, you were into skateboarding too. I was never that good. You're never good, but you were like. Into yeah, the I was around it. I, yeah. I rode bikes too. I was yeah. I rode bikes when I was younger. That's cool. Yeah, I was definitely into like this. I was definitely culture. at the skate park. Whether or not I was fucking like right. busting tricks, I don't know. There yeah. you go. Whatever. Well, you were saying you were like from the Midwest. Yeah. How was that? How'd you get out here? That must have been crazy. Like Midwest I'm, fr sucks. I'm from the Midwest too. I'm I mean, from Minnesota. shout out to Midwest. I think it makes cool people. It but, does. But Indiana, I mean, not for adult me. It did. It served child me. Well. I feel like that song "808 Rock" is like a good. Uh, yeah, that's like your like. Uh, what is it? Tip like, of the hat. Yeah. Yeah. To the, to the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, I got love from my fucking like and like that. Yeah, it's no shade. I mean, I think a lot of people aren't even in the position where they like have the desire to get out or, or the means to get out and like shout out to everyone making it work however the fuck they can mm -hmm. um but how i needed to get the fuck out to be able absolutely. to do what i needed to do how did you get out or like how did you even like i'm from the midwest and like uh -huh. i remember like going on myspace and just like seeing all yeah. like the cool emo music yep. and just like posting and just being like one day i'm gonna get out like yeah, did exactly. you do the same why well, so i had these like grandiose dreams of like you know it's either gonna be new york nashville or la right i was like i gotta get out and i gotta go to a city where i can like do this music shit and I, I had gotten lucky and I had been involved with like some touring artists. So I was on tour when I was young and through touring, I came out to LA and just like every time I came to LA, I was like, fuck, there's like, there's just so many cool people here. And like, there just seems to have like all the opportunity that I need, you know, you like I there. felt like I was like, even though I fucking sucked at music back then, I was just like, I have all this shit, but I have no way to like get it in front of people. Right. In front of like, in my head, like the people that mattered. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go to L.A. And so I just bought a one-way ticket to L.A. I had like 400 bucks, and I just thugged it out. Oh, yeah, the American dream. The American <laughs> dream, yeah, man. man. Kill fucking him. did it. That's Hollywood, baby. That's Hollywood. <laughs> Showbiz. <laughs> yeah. So anything else you want to cover? No, I think I did. Like, how I don't know. How much time do we do so far? 40 minutes. I think we could wrap up. Is there anything you want to talk about? I actually wanted to ask you, like, before we wrap up, what, what's, like, your whole goal for Has Heart? I want it to be, like, the biggest thing in the fucking world, like, bro. You want it to be, like, record label, clothing brand? Yeah, I mean, everything. I want to do a fucking... I want to do... I've got too many ideas, bro. I mean, it already, like, I can already see, like, the bigger picture around it. At first, I thought it was just, like, a clothing brand. And then I realized, oh, this is actually like a record label too. It's like a yeah. way for you to like have your friends get a little. Yeah, like definitely, your definitely. Out. And every, it's a publishing company. I got some homies signed to the publishing company. It's a it's label. Awesome. It's a brand. It's kind of, I mean, at its core, Hazard is just like the crew. Whatever. Yeah, it's the crew, but it's also like the creative ventures of my mind. Right. 
right? So it's like, if I fucking make Aaron. movies, it'll be yeah. like, has hard productions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if I fucking go and make an energy drink, it's going to be has hard energy. It's just like the <laughs> it just thing. Makes more sense it's just my, yeah, yeah, it is me. It's like, it's like me without me. Yeah, exactly. You know you what like you said, you don't want to write little Aaron on a fucking energy drink. Exactly. You exactly. Know, but has hard energy. is just got a fucking sick yeah. logo. It's yeah. like that. I want to make something that like, I want, I want that shit to be like what kids, you know, etch into their notebook. Right. And I want that shit to be like what kids get tattooed. There's been so many kids that got tattooed and I fucking, that's exactly what I want. You know, right. it's, exactly it's just like a symbol of like, it's so cool. It's just like a symbol hazard of like, heart. Yeah. Like, come I'm, on. At its core, it's like got that like, oh, I'm like unlovable, like stay away from me. But I think, I think through the journey, it's also become this just like underdog, the symbol of like underdogs can like come back and yeah. win. And it's just totally like, the emo scene. Like 100%. Like 100%. Just like fucking follow your dreams. I think it's a symbol of like doing whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. yeah. Fuck the rules. And your song, Drugs, is that, is that on your label too? Yeah. So it's all you. Everything I've released is on my label. Yeah. That's so sick. You did it right. Like Thank I know you. a lot of artists who were like who wish they would have had it under their label and yeah, under their definitely. own brand and everything, and you've done it all. You did it straight right. from the beginning. Yeah. Didn't yeah, I it. mean, just fucking stayed true, stayed down, kept my eyes on the fucking prize, and just you know keep working. That's that's my motto. Is like just fucking keep working. Killing it. You got any new projects coming? Yeah. Up? Yeah, I got a new album coming soon Ooh. Aaron or Lil Aaron and the BF's album and the BFZ album's coming out sometime but the Lil Aaron album when's that coming out I remember I texted you about it like a month I'll give ago. you a private link yeah I was like can you send me a link and then you're like no I, 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 I think it's at a point now where I could probably give you a right. link Weird. I've been tinkering it's in the tinkering phase oh, of like everything's like right. written but I'm like yeah, making sure it's perfect. Yeah. And now I'm like start. making sure the like rollout's perfect and like the visuals and all the branding because you know that shit's very important to me. No, it's, I love that. That's important. what I love about yeah. you. And like putting the team together, you know. So I'm like, I'm fortunate enough as an independent artist that like I get that freedom, but also it's it is important to e even though it's independent, it's not just me. You know, I put together, I piece together a team of like, okay, I'm gonna have this person work. You can't on this do part. everything yourself. I was just talking to Skylar. Skylar's gonna creative direct a lot of it, Amazing. which is like fucking Shout. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It's exactly what you want. He's I'm gonna have guy. Morgan do some videos. It's yeah. like assembling the fucking power, the power team of like, how do we make this perfect? Because these these songs, this next album, I think I've done a lot of really cool things as an artist, but this next album is without a doubt like the best music i've ever done and and what sonically what are you going for is it like a mix of all your styles that you've done no in the past? it's mostly rock it's just like alternative rock there's minimal trap there's like i think it's just good alternative rock songs there's a lot of inspiration from like green day and right. like fucking blur and what, fucking what, what like would finn McKinsey call it would he call it butt rock no it's it's a little <laughs> less it's a little less butt rock than 808 rock okay, it's good. it's it's just like <laughs> Good ass fucking alternative pop rock. I'll awesome. I'll play some shit for you. It's fucking good. It's like I think I've taken the amalgamation of like everything I've learned from writing for pop artists and rap artists and rock artists, right. you know, and just like fucking Seeing what works, putting it all together and like, you know, yeah. I'm really proud of it. I, I assembled a really good team of like me, uh, my boy Dan. You met Dan. Mm -hmm. My guitarist and then my homie Evan, we produced it and then I brought in a couple homies to help me write it, which yeah. I just recently started letting people help me write my songs because yeah, I always was like, I can do it myself. Yeah. But it's just better when you have dope people in the room with you. Yeah, and it's also better to have like an outsider's perspective. 100%. Because you get 100%. two in your head. But yeah, because here's the thing in collaboration, creative collaboration, one plus one doesn't equal two. Mm -hmm. One plus one equals like fucking 10 yeah. you know what I'm saying like the amount the m amount you can get done when you when you add people to the room the right people obviously you don't want to go too far mm -hmm. and I'm definitely against having like 10 people in the room in a, in a setting like that but when you have the right crew together like three four people can all of a sudden be like oh fuck we're doing something that like yeah. I, I don't think I could have figured out on my own you yeah know? you need you need that and do you have a name for that project yet I can't let that one slide. Okay. Ooh. Well, at least we know there's a project. There's a project. And the fans know. I think I said it would come out this year. It might come out this year, but it might come out early next year. I'm just making sure everything's perfect. This is my debut album. And is PSA going to be on that? No, PSA is on the last EP, oh, You're okay. the Dog. Got it. But uh, You're the One for Me, the song I've been teasing, is probably the first single. So, Hell yeah. Well, I I'll probably start rolling out a couple songs this year, but like, I'm making sure 
that this is perfect because this is like my fucking debut album this is everything i've been working towards as an artist this is it yeah so i'm like i'm extremely proud of the music i feel like i've conquered that part so now i'm like all right how do we get this roll out because because it's not just about putting out good songs you got to like do everything perfect. So yeah. you said debut album. So you've just done EPs prior. Yeah, I've released like this seven. This is a big EPs. deal. That seven. Yeah. So you need to do due yeah. diligence have and you, put out an album. This is like a 13, yeah. 14 song album. Have it's you been be. saving songs for this album, or is this? Uh, no, stuff? there's one song that wasn't written last year. The rest were written like November, or December last Word. year. So it's all just like all new stuff. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Dude, it's fucking hell yeah! So everyone should get excited for that because it's gonna. You guys look out for that. Shake the game up, and I guess we can we can stop doing this now, right? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> right. We don't have to. We don't have to pretend. Shout to out friends. to y'all. Yeah. So to like stoked. You so when do I get paid? Um, see the way like the budget is <laughs> set up right now. <laughs> it's like we kind of have like. Do you want to hand? God damn it! What the fuck? <laughs> I, we, we thought the beer would be enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lost, you can look 